Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to uh, get a motor spinning quickly. This is the quick start guide for the uh, companion simulation that we've developed for the F28069M InstaSpin enabled uh, launch pad. This is the uh, Launch XL. I will put some links up to where this uh, can be purchased from Texas Instruments. And uh, the companion simulation that we have for the DRV8305 and the Anaheim Motors BLY172S. Uh, this is their standard brushless DC motor. So we'll get this thing spinning with our companion simulation and we'll, we'll do it uh, nice and quick here. Uh, we'll have other videos that go into the in-depth simulation of things, but uh, this one is just meant to be a quick uh, getting started guide. So uh, we'll quickly just plug this thing in. Be careful uh, to make sure that the headers are on the top, uh, the same, tie, same side that the USB port is in. We'll plug in uh, the USB as well. And also, I've got a uh, connector here for 24-volt uh, power. Plug that in as well. And so that's ready to go. Uh, coming back over here to PSIM. We'll come, go file, open examples, uh, sim coder, F2806X, and we'll grab the DRV8305 InstaSpin Lab 11 companion sim. Uh, so this is what this looks like. Um, here's the InstaSpin call to ROM. So we'll do a co-generation of this simulation and then uh, go and dump it to the code directly. So we've got the InstaSpin block here. Uh, we've got uh, InstaSpin enabled F28069 CPU selected. Um, we'll go over the InstaSpin parameters in another video, and we'll go over the setup of the simulation in another video as well. But uh, essentially, this power stage matches the power from the from the uh, inverter that we have here, and uh, the, all the sense circuits match as well. And we'll go over that as I said in, as I said in another video. So we'll just go, and uh, we can simulate this and see what happens. Um, that's always kind of fun, so we can see um, how this works, and how this also works in a processor and loop simulation. So this block is actually a processor and loop call to the uh, InstaSpin algorithm on ROM here, and I've just got to connect to the CPU, and we'll get this thing spinning. So we're starting the simulation, so it's going to start running here pretty quickly, and uh, we should be able to see what happens. Uh, so that's going and working so we can see the speed of the motor starting to pick up there again. We'll go over all of this in another video uh, in a little bit more detail, uh, in a lot of detail actually, and uh, what else can we quickly pick up here? Uh, so there's the uh, current, and where can we also pick up IQ? There's IQ, and IQ's reference is also working. So. There are all the values. Um, we can see the motor speed is heading up towards 600 RPM, and it should settle out around 500, but we'll save this for another video, so we'll just stop this for now. Uh, we'll just we won't look at the waveforms. We'll just get the motor spinning. So to get it spinning, we'll go simulate and generate code. Um, all of the code that gets generated is here, and most importantly, we didn't just generate um, we didn't just generate uh, the .c file. If we go and look at the um, the code folder that was was opened, we can see that we've actually generated library files and project files and linker files and header files, all sorts of information here to to open up and and run this full CCS project. So all we need to do is open up CCS and go project import legacy project and we'll go browse and we'll grab this um, so this is the folder that we just I'm doing this first thing in the morning here 9 12 a.m. Uh, we'll grab the .pjt file hit next and then hit finished don't worry about that so after we hit finish we got the this in um, so we can actually pull up that .c file there it is, and we can see uh, 9, 12, 42. So this, see the timestamp here on my .c file? If we come back here and go simulate, uh, generate code again, 
see a new timestamp 914, and then this one now has the new 9, 914 timestamp. The other thing to check is to make sure your target configuration is set up properly. So this board is an f 20069 m and it's a 100 version 2 JTAG. Uh, so to set to get the target configuration set up, you can go into View and Target Configurations here, and then you can add a new target config file. So test finish, and then um, you can edit this. So you can go. Uh, this would be 100 version 2 for the JTAG, and then you'd find the 069. Uh, processor in the list here and then you hit save but we won't need to, we don't need to deal with that we've already got one set up and we make sure that set as default set as default you can see I've got a num number of other ones set up here for other processors that I use and uh, right so now we are good to go so we just hit debug keep an eye on the motor And uh, hit start, and there we are, we're spinning. That's kind of fun. Uh, so some of the things that we can look at while the motor's spinning, uh, so you'll notice in, in, the, uh, in the schematic, we've got some SCI uh, pins set up. So we've actually set up the serial communication interface to communicate over pins 28 and 29. So PSIM is automatically injecting into the code the necessary um, uh, statements to pass the, these signals back over the serial communication interface. We've actually written a utility to catch onto the other end of that data stream, which is right here. Uh, so we'll just connect to it, and we can look at the speed feedback. Uh, let's maybe change this up a little bit so we can see we're picking up uh, 500 RPM there. Um, in per unit uh, and we're also going to pull up the phase current or not phase current but alpha and we'll take this off of auto scale quickly and we'll change the scale of that so if I load the motor so I'm just gonna put my finger on the side here load it up a little bit we'll see that the currents are actually increasing and the speed is staying constant and if I unload it we'll see that the speed is uh, staying pretty constant as well and the uh, currents have decreased as we don't need as much power anymore so all in all things look to be working pretty well and uh, let's just disconnect this and also pause and stop the sim uh, the the motor from spinning and what we'll do real quick is something that I like to do is to actually change the speed reference from a ref from a constant and we'll actually set up an SCI input so that we can control the speed from that same utility. So we'll go into here and grab an SCI input. Where is it? The SCI input. Grab that, place it in, connect it, and then we'll call this speed ref. We'll change the initial value to 0.5, and we will simulate and generate code again. And we see again 917, and then the .c file in here will be we'll say, hey, there's some changes. Hit yes. We see 917 as the timestamp, and then start debugging. And uh, start this thing running again. So there it's running again, and uh, we'll pull up that utility again, the DSP oscilloscope. And we will again connect. And now we see we can pull up the same uh, signals that we had before. Let's just take this off of auto scale. Pump the scale up again. And now we have the speed reference available to us. So we can um, increase the speed. So let's go up to 1,000 RPM. And we can see oh, we lost that off the screen. But there's, uh, so there's our, our new speed reference. And there's the new um, current waveform. And we can load it again. and see a change up the speed up again so there's 1500 rpm and we can see that things are looking pretty good here okay so that's it for this video uh there's going to be other ones that we're going to talk about um some of the other things that are going on here for example uh how to set this simulation up so there's the important things is using the InstaSpin block here to communicate with ROM, so to set up all the function calls in CodeGen, to set up the uh, sense circuits, uh, and then the most important aspect of InstaSpin, as far as we can tell, is the utility that we have 
to generate the motor parameter file. So this is the instance bin parameter file, which is fairly complex. So this utility helps uh, generate all that together. So uh, look for some other videos, probably at least three more videos, one going over the instance bin, one going over how to do a, a, a processor and loop simulation, and then another one where we go into the code generation and how that all works in a lot more detail. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Check back again for those other videos, and I'll link them when they're, when they're built in, into the video. Okay, thank you so much.